Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is our second session of building um, Fandelva. But I've had a little bit of a problem. Um, I recorded the whole video, did loads and loads of work and bits and bobs. Um, and uh, <laughs> the footage disappeared. Uh, I really don't know what happened. Um, it definitely recorded and then it definitely vanished. So um, you missed it all. Oh, it's been ages doing that. <laughs> I went to went to edit and uh, it was all gone. So uh, this is a bit of a strange video, this one. So this is the second session. Um, but really, I'm going to take you through what I did uh, rather than actually doing too much. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, very strange indeed. So uh, let's start off by going to our scenes. Now, it was rightly pointed out uh, in the season one, session one um, of this series where we're looking at Fandelva, I did talk about um, wanting to hide scenes uh, and I talked specifically, go to the Fandelva, as you can see my, my things have all moved. Um, if I go to this scene here, I talk specifically about walls and walling off goblin ambush as in the words uh, because I was a little bit concerned that um, players come in, they join the map and they go, oh, this is going to be a goblin ambush because it bloody well says it at the top. So I walled that off. Now, somebody um, um, pointed out in the comments that, uh, yeah, that's all well and good except the fact that when I move scene, the navigation top left up there currently says raided carts um that also said goblin ambush etc for all of the scenes because i hadn't necessarily given them a different scene name so they were absolutely right i was being you know all a bit about this and then telling them anyway so one of the excuse me one of the things that i did is i've been through all of the stormwreck isle locations um so beach encounter um for example you can see it's called Beach Encounter. I've now put Beach Landing as its navigation name. So when we move to that scene, it doesn't have the word encounter on there. It says Beach Landing. Not a big deal. We're all right with the observatory compass rows and things like that. Generally, we're okay for Stormwreck Isle. The encounters, we got Cobbold Renegades. I mean, again, it's a little bit of a giveaway, isn't it? But if we go to this scene, you can see top left now, it's just called Renegade Pass. Um, and that's the kind of name... That could be oh yeah it's a pass they've seen the map they go yes it's a pass it's called renegade pass so it's not going to give too much away uh there there owl bear i also looked at as well it just says there there best take care um i just wanted to get the word owl bear out there um it just doesn't matter what i call it so uh, as long as it's not giving stuff away too much so i did go through and do that um as you can see, I've also just tidied things up here. So we've got their folder for Stormwreck Isle, which has our um, our so-called random encounters, set random encounters in there as well. And in Fandelver and below, I've created a chapter folder for chapter one and for chapter two. And we haven't got any further, just so I'm starting to tidy these bits up. Um, now we had already got Goblin Ambush. That was the one where I was talking about the walls and we had all that set up last time. And we looked at Cragmore uh, Hideout as well. Now, you'll see the top is now called um, Inhabited Cave rather than, uh, you know, Cragmore Hideout. Because I want them to find out it's called Cragmore Hideout by doing it. Yes, they've got the word Cragmore Hideout on the map. But again, if we look at the walls, it's outside where they're going to be able to see. No drama whatsoever. I want them to find out that these are Cragmore Goblins through gameplay, not through reading it on a map. Um... So we did that. Now, I did also create the scene for the Goblin Trail, and I didn't have my map for it. Um, <laughs> and rather than have you guys just sit there while I flailed around, uh, in the last video I did, we were looking at using Mid Journey, um, the Discord bot, to generate AI images and things. So uh, I created this map for it. So in the video that didn't record, um, I imported this. I've chucked some leaves on it. Um, I did say, you know, I'm not sure if the leaves are good or not, but it does give a little bit of motion, so that's quite nice. Um, there's no grid on this because it's literally just an image for them to look at while we're talking about their journey along there. And I've put in a journal entry. So I wrote all of this while you guys were not, <laughs> were not able to watch it. Um, and so I've put in the description with all of their roles. You've seen me do that before, so I don't think you've lost anything here. Um, and added the snare and the pit trap stuff. So this is just something for them to look at. Now, there was one thing I encountered that um, hadn't really occurred to me before. 
When we go things like, if I want them to roll a dex check, if I click on this, see there's a yellow banner that comes up at the top. It says, no selected or assigned actor could be found. So to make rolls, like there is the wisdom survival roll there, dexterity save check there, another dexterity check, there's a couple of damage rolls. To make them actually work, click in the journal and it, makes, and it asks them to make that roll, you've got to select a token. This scene is not a token scene. <laughs> so I've got no tokens on there. So I can't actually do that unless I choose to, uh, Haley. it's always gonna be Haley. unless I choose to dump their tokens on here, um, which is a bit weird, uh, I can't select their tokens and force them to do that role. So in that instance, I'm just gonna ask them to go to their character sheet and do it. So these links in here, wisdom survival role, etc. They're kind of pointless. They don't do anything. I mean, I guess the only thing is it helps it stand out. And I've just realized, look, I've got one here. Look at this one. That's not working, is it? Because I've done something wrong. Let me edit that while I'm here. Um, which bit is that in? That's in snare. Uh, and that's because I missed the slash. Oh, it was useful coming back. There we go. It's fixed it now. There we go. Nice and easy to fix that. Um, yeah, and it, you can do request roll. And all that's going to do is shove that in there um, and I can get everybody to do it that way, but I can't get them to, you know, I can't select them and get and actually make that role for them or anything like that. So, um, that, yeah, but there we go. Um, not the end of the world, but it's something we encountered and something to bear in mind when you're doing your own adventures. Uh, yeah, it's just called the Goblin Trail. Actually, just want to double check. Oh, I've got to go to my journal. Just want to double check. Yeah, not globally visible. I don't want the players seeing that. So I did that. Okay. And that pretty much finished off everything we needed for chapter one. So I'm going to close that. Uh, and then I was looking at um, Fandolin. Because in theory, they do the Cragmore hideout. And then they continue their journey off to town. So what did I do in town? Um, waffled an awful lot, of course. Because that's what I do. Uh, I talked about the fact that we had a grid on here. Hex grid for this one. Um, so that we can move about town and you can see the size of that grid actually each of these is 20 foot um, does it really matter no not hugely but I do want tokens on here because people are going to be moving around we then talked about the setting up of the various places here and first of all we went and set up the Stonehill Inn so if I just double click on this we created the Stonehill Inn um, journal item we put a description of it, we added a map in, uh, I talked about wanting to put a price list in here, but weirdly enough, I ran out of time in that video, I know. <laughs> uh, and then I've got a DM notes, which is about the rumours and stuff. So here's the important bit, the discussion that I had, as it turns out, with myself, was about these journal entries in town. So if I double right click on this one, go to journals, this one is globally visible. So when they come to town, they can see this icon, which means they can click on this icon and they can read this journal. So just go to the uh, the journal at the top right here under Fandelva. And again, I same as the scenes, I've created some folders here just to try and uh, keep things nice and neat. If I right click on Stonehill in and go to configure, I've set all players as observer. That means all players can see this journal part. The little experiment, I wasn't sure if it would work because I've not done it before. The little experiment I wanted to do, if I right click on any one of these, I can configure ownership for that page of the journal. So the general description, observer, they can read that. Uh, the map itself, observer. So they can come in at any point and they can see a map of the Stonehill Inn if they want to, they don't have to. I'm going to do the same with the prices, but with the DM notes part, if I go to configure ownership, this is set to none. So what this means is the players can see the journal for the Stonehill Inn, but they cannot see that page within the journal. Uh, and we, we, I, on my own, talking to myself, um, checked that and that works absolutely fine. I logged in as a player, um, and pulled up Haley, and Haley could not see the DM notes part, so that works. But however, Haley could see um, the Stonehill Inn, 
with the map and everything else. Uh, and it puts it nicely onto one page um, for Haley, which is great. Um, but she can't see the DM notes bit, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so that was one of the big things we did. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Gosh, it always seems to make me cough when I talk for some reason um, on here. Okay, so that's that's pretty much what we did. Uh, I know that seems like, it's like we didn't do very much, did you? <laughs> yeah, it took a while. Um, but yeah, I've just so I've organised these things into into nice things. Um, we've looked at the journal. We've checked to make sure that is the way it works. And one of the things I said when I talked about this prices tab, but I didn't put anything in there, is for me one of the things that I find most. Um, most challenging, most disruptive to the game when you're playing is a player suddenly decides to go shopping when you're least expecting it and then starts asking prices for everything. So what do they sell this in here? Do they, uh, how much is that? Can I sell this back to them? Uh, and you end up doing things on the fly. You grab your player's handbook and you're quickly looking up prices like what the heck is that? Um, and I find that uh, slows the game right down. What I want to do is I want to make sure I've got price lists for everything. So when they come to the Stonehill and they say, how much is a room again? Do you know what? They can look it up in their own blinking journal. They can look it up themselves. They don't need to ask me, get me to look it up. They can look up and go, right, I can see what's on offer. They can make a decision about what they want. Um, and they can say, right, yeah, I'm paying for a room. And they can take off their own coins, off their own character sheet. Uh, and just, just do it <laughs> to cut down that admin. Now, the first time they come into the Stonehill Inn, I, absolutely, I would expect to be role-playing that. So, for the, uh, just open that up again, the Stonehill Inn, configure ownership is going to be none when they start. Okay, so they'll be able to see this icon, but until they go in there, I'm not going to share that journal with them. Once they've been in there and done that initial contact, I can share that with them. They can always go back, look at it, um, you know, whatever they want to do, um, you know, buy stuff, etc. Look at the prices. Try to remind themselves which shop sells what. And there's a few shops in town here that I want to be able to do it with. Um, so you've got uh, Bath and Provisions, which is up this area here. Um, we've got the the um, Lion Shield Costa, I think, is here. You've got the Town Hall. Um, you've got Sister Garrily. They might want healing and things. So you know, do I need to put a price list in there? Um, You've got the Miners Exchange. Oh, this is the Smithy, I think, was here. But I might put some prices in. There is no prices in the manual for what they... But if they want stuff repaired, um, you know, I might put some prices in there for them. So things like that, they can just manage themselves. We're going to have another um, in pub down here. Guarantee they're going to go in there at some point just to, you know, just to confuse things, just to go and poke at the red brands <laughs> just try and cause a bit of trouble and they'll find it um so i want to do that um but the reason i haven't done that is there is a um a add-on module that we've not looked at called monks enhanced journal i think something like that but it's definitely one of the monks um things that we can have and we've already got monks monks token bar um, added on as part of the midi qol that did when i first kind of had a very brief play with it a while ago um, you can kind of set up shops there so you can give a shop items and the player can literally drag that item to their character sheet and it will automatically deduct their money for them it was like really sweet I don't know if that currently is working under the 3.0 game engine um, with the changes to journal and stuff like that. So I'm going to investigate that and hopefully if that's working, we're going to do a video about that add-on um, and have a look at that. And if that is working as we want, that's what we're going to implement in town here. So again, players in town, once they've been somewhere, I can share that journal entry with them and they can just crack on and do whatever they like. But I do like the fact that I can have part of this with my DM notes. They go in the Stonehill Inn, everybody can see everything they need to and can't see anything that they shouldn't see. Good, huh? Um, the other thing I did talk about was the fact that we've got people like Elsa the um, Dwarf Bartender. Uh, we've got this Gnome Weaver. We've got Human Miner, this Human Farmer. Um, Toblin's son's here and Toblin himself. They all are in theory, in the pub when the players first arrive. Now, if that's the middle of the day, 
is this farmer going to be sitting in the pub in the middle of the day, middle of the afternoon, or are they going to be out working their fields? Yeah. Uh, what about this gnome weaver? They're going to be using the, the natural daylight to be working and earning money, not just sitting around in the pub. So depending what time they get here, that's going to change. So what, because these are people they could interact with and they are kind of named people around town, I do want to create them as NPCs. Um, we've got, if I go up to my actors, um, we have got some NPCs. And again, look, I've created a couple of folders here, one for Stormwreck NPCs and one for Fandelver ones. And I've got a couple of people in here already, although um, not any of these ones, of course. So I want to create those so that I can also put tokens onto the map. So if they're wandering around town, yeah, sure, that weaver might be in the pub. She don't live there. So they're going to see that token around town in different places. I'll decide where that particular individual lives. Um, so if, if they want to follow up with her for something, they can find out where she lives and go to her house. I don't want to do maps for every single house, of course, but I at least want to be able to go, oh, yes, hang on. Uh, oh, yes, so you're going to pop over and go see the weaver. She lives over here, and they can go and do that. And again, just add some map pins on for people's houses as they find out whom lives where. They can actually say, oh, we're going to go see that person. And I can just let the pin, you know, just let the pin be seen by them. They know where they are. They can move around. And it helps make it a really interactive map for them, even though there's not an awful lot that goes on action-wise in town. Um there is up here, if you already know, there is up here. Um, and there is some red brand action as, as well, of course. But because I've kind of got this like this, you can actually use the middle of the town as the encounter and actually have the, the red brand scuffle here if you want to. Or the other thing that I did is I did create a new, whoops, I'm on journals. I did create a new scene, which is I created the Stonehill Inn. Um, because they're probably going to spend a fair bit of time in here. This is their main place. They're going to be relaxing and chilling. And of course, where they're going to meet those NPCs and have discussions and things like that. So part of the previous video that didn't actually record is I added a bunch of lights in for the candles and things. I added some sounds in for the fires. And I put walls in so that this actually, you know, it actually works. And they can wander around without too much drama. Um, so I did all those bits and bobs, um, which is why the video was kind of getting towards the end of its amount of time. So sorry you missed that. You've seen me do walls, you've seen me do lights, you've seen me do sounds before. If you haven't, go back to the Stormwreck Isle series where we started with basically no knowledge at all and built those. And you can see the, how we <clears throat> struggled <laughs> with lighting and sounds and tried to get all those bits organized uh, and this literally didn't take very long at all because I knew what we were doing copy and paste is your friend and all of that stuff so with all that said what is next to do what do I want to um, add next to this it's going to take a while to flesh out Fandolin um, I've got a fair bit of work to do on this, so we've basically started one place and that's it, and I haven't even finished that. So I want to do a video looking at the Monk's Enhanced Journal, if that's the correct name for it, um, if that is updated and functional. So I'm going to do that, um, and then I need to carry on building these different properties, and I need to build all these NPCs. I'm not going to do that right now for you, um, but that will be in the next video. So, uh, yeah, apologies you missed all that footage. Um, but, yeah, nothing particularly new. Uh, just, um, you're just, hopefully now you're caught up and you're up to date. Sorry about that. <laughs> Things happen. See you in the next one. Bye.